So for your daily quiz for today, you have two questions that involve solving for missing side measures in a right triangle. So you are going to be setting up and solving your trig equations from yesterday. Once you have completed your daily quiz, you can move on with your lesson for today. Now today what we are going to be looking at are inverse trig equations. So we are going to be working with trig equations again today, but instead of solving for missing side measures, today we're going to be solving for missing angle measures. Now for our objective for today, our main objective is that we are going to be able to solve for a missing angle measure in a right triangle by using inverse trig equations. So pretty straightforward, highly connected to what we did yesterday, um, and it will be using your SOHCAHTOA, but we will be looking at what to do if you are missing the angle instead of the side. Now just as a reminder, because you possibly have a different calculator today than you did yesterday, please make sure, and we've talked about this each day, that you go into to your mode menu and you check to make sure that your calculator is in degrees. We want to make sure that everybody is getting your correct answer and if it's in radians instead of degrees you will be getting the wrong answer for each one of these. So what we have here for our mastery ticket are two uh, right triangle questions here where instead of having a missing side in your problem you actually have a missing angle this time and this symbol that you have right here is the Greek symbol for theta and all that that symbol is is the symbol for an angle when you are talking about trig so if you see that um, symbol there you are just talking about that angle sometimes I use X sometimes I use the theta so it all just depends on the problem so please don't get confused by that you can call that X and when we look at our problems today we'll be using X instead so that's what you can do there so what we are going to be looking at today and how it differs from what we did yesterday is that instead of solving for a missing side measure, today we are going to actually be solving for a missing angle measure. So what ends up happening when you are dealing with a missing angle measure is you create a variable on the left hand side of your problem with the sine, cosine, and tangent. So what we have to talk about today is how do we get rid of that? And our equations today are going to look a little bit different. We're actually going to discover how that inverse sine, cosine, and tangent comes about. But first of all, please remember that we are still using SOHCAHTOA. I told you at, from the beginning that that's going to be essential. You need to have that memorized by now. And that gives us our relationships for our sine, cosine, and tangent. So all of that is going to remain the same. The difference is going to be our notation today. You will notice that on the sine, cosine, and tangent today, that there is a little negative one there. That little negative one stands for an inverse function. So when we are solving for a missing angle, because the angle is associated with the sine, cosine, or tangent, we have to use inverse functions in order to solve the problem. And we're, I'm going to show you today exactly how that comes about. Now, before we get too far into um, solving your inverse trig functions, I want to talk about how we put these in the calculator. We've already talked about making sure that your calculator is set in degrees instead of radians, but now we have to talk about where do we find the inverse trig functions on our calculator and how do we use them. So to find your inverse trig functions on your calculator, you are going to actually use the same buttons you've been using this entire time. But instead of using the regular sine, cosine, and tangent, you will notice that right above each one of your sine, cosine, and tangent ratios, there is a sine to the negative first, cosine to the negative first, and tangent to the negative first. So those are your inverse sine, cosine, and tangent buttons. So we are going to be looking at functions today that use that inverse, so you're going to want to make sure that you are using those particular buttons. Now in order to do that pretty easy, you're just going to be pressing the second button and then either your sine, your cosine, or your tangent button depending on which function you are using. So you will be using your second button for today. So let's take a look at some examples here. Number one, it says find the measure of angle X to the nearest degree. Now there's a couple ways that you can actually see these problems. I've already shown you one way in your mastery ticket. The angle can be labeled with a theta, which was that little O shape with the line through it. 
you, the second way you're going to see here in number one, you can actually be given the angle that you are trying to find in the problem itself, so in the written portion of the problem. So for example, on this question here, I am asked to find the measure of angle X. So the angle that I am talking about is this angle here because that is the one that is labeled X. So if it is not identified on your triangle, make sure you go back and actually read your question. So that's the angle that I'm trying to find. Now, we talked about in the last couple days that when you are working through a trig problem, that the very first thing you have to do is identify your reference angle. Well, I have just done that. I have found my reference angle right here. My reference angle is angle X because that is the angle that I'm trying to find. The second thing that we did was we identified our sides based on where they were with respect to that reference angle. So I know that my six is my opposite because it is on the opposite side of the triangle from the reference angle. And I know that my 10 is my hypotenuse because it is across from the right angle. The hypotenuse is always across from your right angle there. Now, once again, we're gonna need our SOHCAHTOA in order to solve these problems. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that at the top here. Now, I know based on the fact that I have the opposite and the hypotenuse here, that I am definitely going to be using my sine function for the first question here. So for the first question, I am going to be using sine. So I am going to write out my general equation just like we did yesterday. So I have sine of x is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So everything is the same so far. I found my reference angle. I labeled my sides, I determined whether I was using sine, cosine, or tangent, and then I wrote the general format of my equation here. So the first four steps are the same. Now, we're going to continue, and we're still doing the same thing. We're plugging in with what information we have. So I'm going to do sine of the angle. Now, I don't know what the angle is this time. So in these equations here, yesterday we were plugging in an angle measure. I don't have the angle measure. I can't plug that in. So I'm going to leave that x is equal to opposite, which is 6, over hypotenuse, which is 10. Now, once I've set up my equation, you will notice something very different from what we did yesterday. Yesterday, the x was on this side of the equation here. So I was able to just multiply my denominator to the other side, or I was able to set up a proportion and cross-multiply. I can't do that today because today the x is on the left side of the equation. What I need to get rid of is this sign. Now, normally what you would say to me is, well, let's just divide both sides by the sign. You can't divide by a sign. A sign is an operation. It's not a value. So we need to figure out how do we get rid of that sign. So what I need to do is I need to take this sign right here and I need to bump it to the other side of my equation because I want x by itself. So that's exactly what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that side, that sign, and I'm going to bump it to the other side. What that's going to end up doing is it's going to leave me with x on the left-hand side. When I take that sign to the other side, it's going to become an inverse. Remember back when you were in Algebra 1, you learned about the fact that inverse operations are what you use when you move a term from one side to the other, and the inverse means the opposite. So what I have done is I have basically just used my, my inverse operations from Algebra 1. The inverse of sine is inverse sine or sine to the negative first. That negative 1 is just a notation, so that's not going to do anything to our problem, but it's just to show us that instead of using a regular sine, we are using an inverse sine then the value that I had that I am taking the inverse sine of is 6 over 10. So instead of taking the sine of x, I'm now taking the inverse sine of 6 over 10. Now, we're simply going to put that value in our calculator. So in order to put that in your calculator, you are pressing second sine in order to get that. So second sine. And I said this yesterday, but you should have a calculator in front of you. You should not be waiting for me to do this in the calculator by myself because if you are uncomfortable with the calculator when it comes test time, there's nothing I can do for you. So I'm going to do second sign, and then in the parentheses, I'm going to do 6 divided by 10. Close parentheses, hit enter, and my value here is x is approximately 36.9. 
and we measure that in degrees. Now, it's set up here to round to the nearest degree. I don't generally round to the nearest degree, so I'm going to say round to the nearest tenth on all of your problems here. So x is 36.9 degrees. So let's go ahead and try number two. This one I'm going to move a little bit quicker through because we've already kind of introduced some of the ideas here. So first thing that we know we have to do is identify our reference angle. And our reference angle is angle X, and this time angle X is at the top of the triangle. Now the second thing that I need to do is determine my sides with respect to that reference angle. So do I have opposite, do I have adjacent, or do I have hypotenuse? Now, what I notice is that the 20 is across from the right angle, which makes this our hypotenuse. And I notice that the 15 is actually touching the reference angle. And the word touching or next to is represented by the word adjacent in geometry. So I have my adjacent and I have my hypotenuse. Now, looking up at the top at my Sokotoa up here, I notice that adjacent and hypotenuse is a cosine function. So for this particular problem, number two, I am going to be using my cosine function. So I'm going to write out my general form of the equation. So cosine of x is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And I'm hoping by now you see the importance of making sure that you're labeling everything. You should not, absolutely not be leaving that step out. Most students find this module to be the most interesting and one of the actual easier, even though the material is a little bit difficult, but when they are labeling everything, most of my students love this module. Now, we know that for the cosine of x, we know that x represents the angle in the picture, and we don't have an angle measure. So we're going to have to leave that x. Then the adjacent was 15 over the hypotenuse was 20. Now, same thing as above. We're trying to get x by itself. So I need to take this cosine, and I need to bump it to the other side of my equation here. Now, when I do that, when I bump that to the other side of the equation, I'm left with x is equal to, now, moving to the other side creates an inverse function. So inverse cosine of 15 over 20. Once I have bumped that cosine to the other side of my equation there, I'm going to put that in my calculator. So I'm going to press second and cosine and then 15 divided by 20, close parenthesis, and I end up with 41.4. So x is 41.4 degrees. And once again, I know it says round to the nearest degree, but I was round to the nearest tenth on these. So let's start moving a little bit faster on these. For number three, it says find the measure of angle T to the nearest degree. Now I'm going to do number three with you and I'm going to leave number four for you to work on on your own. So let's take a look at where angle T is in number three. So angle T is right here. So I have identified my reference angle. Second thing that I need to do is I need to identify with respect to those to that angle, what sides do I have? So the 7 is opposite, and I notice that my 13 is opposite the right angle, which means my 13 must be the hypotenuse. Now, using my Sokotoa, I know that given an opposite and a hypotenuse, I am going to be using a sine equation here. So I'm going to write my general format. So I have sine. So sine of x is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. I don't have the angle, so I'm going to leave that sine of x is equal to. My opposite was 7. My hypotenuse was 13. Now, once I've got my equation set up, I know I need to get rid of this sign. So I need to take that sign, I need to bump that to the other side of my equation here. And when I bump that to the other side of my equation, that's going to become an inverse sign over there. So sine to the negative first, 
of 7 over 13. Now I'm going to grab my calculator and I'm just going to put that in. So I'm second sine 7 divided by 13. And I end up with x equals 32.6. And that is in degrees. Now, I'm going to leave number four for you to actually try on your own. So what I want you to do is pause the video. I don't actually work through this one on the video because I want to take a look at what happens if the picture looks a little bit different, doesn't necessarily have the angle given to you in the writing part of it. So I'm going to leave this one for you to do. When you finish this one, start the video back up and you can finish the rest of your notes. So on this slide, we're going to skip around a little bit. I'm actually going to leave number five for you to work on on your own, and I'm actually going to work through number six with you. So we're going to do number six as an I do, and you're going to do number five as a we do. So you're going to work on that one. So let's take a look, and I'll explain why I'm doing number six in a second. So let's take a look at number six here. Now, in number six, you'll notice that the only difference between the previous problems and this problem is that the reference angle is actually already marked in the figure. So that is the only difference. In the previous problems, I gave you that information in the written part of the question. Here, I label it with an X. Now, as we talked about earlier, that can be labeled with an X or it can be labeled with a theta, which is kind of, that's not a very good theta, but it's like an oval with a line through it. So that's what a theta looks like. And either way, whichever one you have, whether you have X in your angle or you have a theta there, that is your reference angle in that triangle. So even if I gave you nothing in this part of the problem and your X was there, you would know what it was that you were trying to solve for. Now, same process, we've identified our reference angle and now we're gonna identify our sides with respect to that angle. Now, I noticed that the 17 is on the opposite side of the triangle, so my 17 must be my opposite. And I noticed that the 11 touches the reference angle, but it's definitely not the hypotenuse because the hypotenuse is over here across from the right angle. So if this touches the reference angle but is not uh, the hypotenuse, then it has to be my adjacent side. So I'm going to label that A. So I know that in this particular triangle, I have my opposite and my adjacent. Now, thinking about my Sokotoa, Using opposite and adjacent as we have here is a tangent ratio. So I have my opposite and adjacent, opposite and adjacent is tangent. So I'm going to write out my general tangent equation. So that's tangent of x is equal to opposite over adjacent. Now I don't know what my angle is, so that's going to remain x. My opposite is 17, my adjacent is 11. Now, I know I want to bump that tangent to the other side of my equation here. When I do that, it becomes an inverse tangent of 17 over 11. Now, I'm going to grab my calculator. I'm going to press second tangent, 17 divided by 11, close parentheses, and I end up with an x value of 57 0.1 degrees. Now, now that we've worked through number six, I'm going to leave number five for you to work on your own. Um, so if you need any help with that one, let me know and I can come help you out. Now, last one, and I did want to look at this one, and I always throw this one in every year because I get students that when we have these little bitty skinny triangles like this, it gets really confusing to try to figure out where the opposite, the adjacent, and the hypotenuse is. You've got to be really careful when you're trying to identify your sides in these little bitty triangles because that can get a little bit tricky. Now, first of all, my reference angle is down here where the X is. Now, first thing that I notice is that the 12 is opposite that angle. Now, it's when dealing with the 29 that I have a lot of students that get tripped up in identifying whether that's the adjacent or the hypotenuse. Because in the skinnier triangles, the hypotenuse tends to be very close to the length of the other side. You've got to be careful. Remember that the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. 
this side is not across from the right angle. So this side right here has to be your adjacent side. Now, once you've identified your opposite and your ad adjacent, that is the TOA part of SOCA TOA. So we are going to be using a tangent function here. So tangent of x is equal to opposite over adjacent. So I have tangent of x is equal to 12 over 29. Now, I need to bump that tangent to the other side of the equation. So I'm going to be left with x is equal to, that's going to become an inverse tangent when I bump it to the other side of 12 over 29. Now, I'm going to grab my calculator and I'm going to press second tangent and then 12 divided by 29. And I end up with x equaling approximately 22.5 degrees. Now here is your mastery ticket. Again, you have two questions here and both of them have thetas in them instead of x's. Doesn't really matter. You know that that is your reference angle and that's going to become x in the equation anyway. But you are going to set up your trig equations and solve for those missing angles.